Today we are looking at Christmas items from the past that can sell for thousands of dollars right now. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about Christmas ornaments from the past. When I was small, my Christmas ornaments were made out of glass. They were the mercury ones you see these days that are selling for some good money. The farther back you go, you will find similar everyday items like paper mache, Santa Clauses, and candy containers, and batten spun cotton figures and decorations for the tree. So let's head on over now and look at some of those fabulous vintage Christmas decorations that can sell for thousands of dollars right now. Now, Swarovski crystals have been around for quite some time. The Christmas decorations, the Christmas ornaments that they sell are some of the highest priced ones on eBay and have been for several years now. I've talked about these in other Christmas related videos, but the prices nowadays are the highest I have ever seen them in my life. These are legitimate. Many of these can sell for $1,000 on their own. They came out in 1991 and have been issuing them ever since so a nice assortment right here seven thousand dollars for this run of ornaments they show up in regular bins you can find them in everyday ornaments most people don't have a clue that the value of these may be so much they may have received it as a Christmas gift or something along that line I do run into these occasionally they're very scarce but they are still out there you will see them on eBay quite often it won't be a one-off it'll be something you will see routinely and constantly Constantly. Now, nativity sets can hold value. There are some that are worth more than others like this one here. These are all hand-carved Italian wooden figures. Very nice. Now, these look just like any other ones as well. So if you're not paying attention to what you have or not looking at them close enough, you may miss some of these. There's many other sets that sell into the hundreds. Maybe not a thousand, but there are a lot of nativity sets that will sell for some big money. Now, back in the late 19th century, a lot of things were made out of paper mache and what's referred to as Dresden. Now, Dresden is a city in Germany, and that's where most of this stuff was made. Most of the fine paper decorations back in those time frames, all the way up to the beginning of World War I. Obviously, at that point, we stopped buying stuff from them, and most of it turned over to American quality. It wasn't quite as good as the Dresden, so Dresden is what most people look for. They have been doing it longer than we had at that point so their technology and and construction was far superior to most so most people want the Dresden ones as you can see by the price almost four thousand dollars for this one here now some of these can be a combination of Dresden paper that's been gilt or silvered or it can be paper mache or even spun cotton or homespun as some would say as well all of these sorts of decorations were something that were fairly common may be expensive but they were readily available back say 120 130 years ago now here is an oddball one not necessarily specifically decorations but to some people yes these are a decoration these are a Christmas set of beer cans by Blatt's that came out in I believe 1955 it was only issued in one year and they were different colored versions for a Christmas layout decoration three thousand two hundred dollars for these very scarce this is just to show you that it doesn't necessarily have to be specifically tied to a Christmas item itself to still garner some Christmas attention a similar aspect would be like a comic book with the Christmas scene on it like a December issue of Superman from like 1941 1942 a 60s version of spider-man comics with spider-man on the cover with a Christmas tree or something there's a lot of other niche markets but this is one of those unique ones that most people haven't a clue that they did cans like this. Their series from the 60s with baseball players on them and all kinds of things. Now here's an interesting bow snickel. Now this is basically a European version of Santa Claus to some extent. And this piece here is a lantern. It says German lantern. It reminds me of the Halloween black cats with the glow eyes where you'd walk around with a candle inside of a little lantern and go trick-or-treating back in the 30s and 40s. This is a similar piece. It's very scarce. Nine inches tall 
cost, so it's fairly large, it's over $3,000. This is something that would have been very common, and you could have purchased that even a five and dime store back in the day. But since it was a disposable item, it's made of stuff that just doesn't withstand the ages. The price goes up insanely on some of these, so it's $3,000. Now, a lot of the major department stores also issued special Christmas decorations. These are tabletop decorations. There's more than just this lot up here, too. So if you're interested, you can find many more of these that have sold in the last year or so. These are FAO Schwartz. They're plushes, basically. They're larger size than most. It's the complete set, $2,550. Many times you'll see some of these and they won't have the label or anything or any way to tell who made them or what they were for, and people do tend to miss these. Now, Department 56 has been around for decades and decades and decades. We have sold many things with Department 56 markings on them. Now, one of the highest priced Christmas season Department 56 items are from the Christmas vacation series with Chevy Chase. There are buildings, there's objects, and all sorts of things like this can go for some good money. The motorhome, the recreational vehicle can go for a thousand pretty much most of the time. This is a retired one, Todd and Margot's house. Elaine from Seinfeld plays Margot in the movie, if you're unaware. Excellent item here. You can see the price, $2,500. These are pretty much legitimate prices. You can find dozens of these examples selling. They're limited to some extent, but there's enough of them out there that they still can show up. Out of the box, in the box, it doesn't really matter. I will take one of these either way, even out of the box. Now here's just another example to give you another idea here. This is his boss, Chevy Chase's boss's house, Boss Shirley's. Just another example to show you $1,650 for this one. Out of the box, in the box, it can, it doesn't really matter. If it's out of the box, they can be missed very readily. People just don't consider something like that worth that kind of money. Now, here's another Bows Nickel German one as well. This is 11 inches tall, bigger than the other one, $2,383 on this one. It's basically a paper mache of sorts, finely painted, finely detailed. Now, here's a designer piece, Patience Brewster Crinkles. Now, I have shown other pieces in this same line, and most of them sell for some good money. The shoes, most of the time, give it away on pieces like this. Many people won't have a clue on value, but there are shoes on the base of this crystal. Christmas tree. Other than that, it's basically to look like a normal Christmas tree in that fanciful feather Christmas tree style. $2,000. Most of these go for some insane amounts of money. These are not super old items either. You can look up these as well. There are many different versions and varieties and different Christmas decorations to begin with from the same company. Figures, ornaments, fanciful items, and things along that line. Very nice item, very unique. Now here's another German piece as well, and this is a candy container. It's 17 and a half inches tall, a monster size for something like this. So you can see the price, $1,850. The head or the top will come off, and it would be filled with candy and given to somebody, a, a child, as a gift. They would have been able to use them, and they would have displayed these after the candy was gone. Again, these aren't made to withstand the seasons and the ages. These are damaged quite extensively most of the time. Paper mache, cardboard, paper in general are what these are mostly made out of. That's why they don't last. That's why they sell for some good money. Now, if this was mixed up in some newer ones, you might not realize the age on this because of the condition also. Now, here's another German item. Again, most of these come from Dresden, Germany. That was the center, the hub of the world at one time for the best paper products you could imagine. So whether it's Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day, Easter, most of it's from Germany if it's paper like this. This is a candy container that could have been used as well as a lantern, a Christmas lantern, singing Christmas carols or something along that line. The head sculpt on this one is fairly unique as well. $1,700 plus on this one here. Now, cotton batting is something else that people made ornaments out of very regularly. You can find these mass-produced as well in Germany and in some cases here in the U.S. This is like a homespun folk art style Christmas ornament and you can find them in all sorts of animals and figures as well as Santa Claus. As you can see this one went for over $1,600. If you're ever interested in how to make these I have a video up here on my other channel The Art Professor that will show you how to make spun cotton Christmas ornaments similar to this right now. 
Now here's a very interesting piece by Polaron. This is a vintage company. Here is a blow mold Santa Claus, $1,251. Now a blow mold is basically a mold and they're hollow cast in plastic, a version of whatever the mold is of, and this one is Santa Claus. It has inner workings in here where his arm actually moves. The color scheme, the details are excellent on this one. More realistic than most blow molds you will ever find these days. Now, when I was a child going Christmas shopping with my parents, most of the good department stores, toy stores and such forth had these mechanical figures in the lobby, in the front, and displays in all the windows advertising Christmas wares. These were huge back then. And this one here is a Robertson's. There's a bunch of different companies that made similar ones as well. Mechanical figures. A lot of these people will recondition and use as well. Like a Christmas Wonderland character here. $1,235. Doesn't matter if they work it just matters that it's still in decent condition it still displays nicely which this one does there are companies out there that will repair these for you as well may cost a fortune but they are repairable in many cases now here's an interesting department store plush from the 50s I think it's Maison Blanche. I could be wrong in the pronunciation, but this is Mr. Bingles. It's a snowman doll. This is in some price guide, so this is one of those scarcities that most people may miss if they don't realize what this is from. The label on this just says character as the name of the company as well, so if you see one that says character on it, you might want to look into it because they made a lot of ones for department stores, including the same company as well. You can see the price. It went for almost $1,200, one of the most expensive plushes you will find for Christmas. Now, here is a specific Dresden piece. This is a Victorian. It's basically cardboard with gilting over the outside of it. You can actually see the construction. It's two pieces that were molded separately and then glued together and then gilt on the outside. This would have hung on a Christmas tree back in, say, 1870s or 80s. Even before that, at some point, these probably made their way over here. Fabulous piece for the day and age. These are crushable, so most of these don't survive in this condition. They'll be flattened or some other issue with them. These sorts of Dresden Christmas ornaments come in all shapes and sizes. Fish, animals with embellishments and mica, glitter, uh, crushed up glass on the outside, all sorts of different things. $1,132 for this fab piece without a doubt. Now, one last area that I do run into are vintage Christmas plates. Christmas plates have been around since the 1870s by various companies. Now, these look very similar to modern-day Avon plates or some of the other modern-day versions of these. So these are mixed up sometimes by people not looking more closely to them. And this is a B&G, Bing & Grondel. It's a very well-known maker of this sort. You will find other plates on eBay selling in this price range as well. This is one of the first earliest ones that you will find though, and it went for almost $1,100. Very fine plate indeed. And the last one here is a Royal Copenhagen. There's a bunch of these that have sold. This is a standard price for these. If you're not paying attention, you may miss the date on this as 1908. Fabulous image here. It's nicely marked as most of these are, so you just have to pay attention to what's on the back of these. Many people will pass these by when they see the holes meant to hang these from the wall, but that is the way a lot of these earlier ones were made. As long as those mounts aren't damaged, I will sink some money into these sorts of things because they always sell. Christmas in general is very collectible, but these items here are worth $1,000 or more most any day of the week, and they have been for many, many years. So you can turn these up in attics, flea markets, garage sales, estate sales, wherever you can source these sorts of items. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you have it. Hopefully that gave you an idea, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. You know Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen. But do you recall the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. All of the other reindeer used to laugh and call him names. 
they never let poor Rudolph join in any reindeer games. His nose is a sight. It's red as a beet. Twice as big and twice as bright. Poor Rudolph. Where most reindeer's noses are brownish and tiny, Rudolph's was red, very large, and quite shiny. And then came the greatest idea in all history. I need you tonight to lead all my deer on the rest of our flight. Dear Mommy and Daddy, I have gone to help Santa. Don't worry, Rudolph, that's me.